Hello YouTubers and welcome to another episode of the vlogs. We've made it to a new week. We've made it to a Monday. We've made it to an opportunity to see how good we can make this week and start it off right with a lovely Monday. Today we're doing a question and answer vlog. So I've put a little questioning type thing on my Instagram story and people have been asking questions. I'm going to be answering the questions today but first things first before we start answering the questions we've got some weights to do this morning on this lovely day as it's getting lighter and lighter and lighter and we're heading into summer so let's get the weights a little bit of a montage oh yeah Outside of the gym after a lovely weight session this morning on this outrageously sunny morning light bright blue sky not too cold and wonderful pump on the legs with a leg dominant session today and that leads us into a couple of the first questions for today's question and answer video a lot of people have been asking many weights related questions so I'll cover a few of them what exercises are best for rowing well apart from the bicep curl the tricep extension or the shoulder shrug i would really stick to simple movements that are leg dominant generally although rowing is heavily whole body it still involves a lot of legs and generally if you have stronger legs it can sort of correlate to faster scores it doesn't always work like that but that's generally in my experience what i've seen so squats deadlifts leg press those kind of exercises if you can get good at those you should see improvements in your scores but obviously that doesn't just apply to everybody everybody's their own individual and if you're really strong in squat then maybe just doing more squats isn't going to help maybe there's other things you can work on maybe it is just more upper body related or maybe it's sort of a weakness in that is less general to hit than just saying squats deadlifts or leg press but also another question was how many sets do I do for rowing? How many reps? What kind of lifting do I do? Do I do hypertrophy? Do I do strength? Do I do explosive power? Well, again, it's similar to sort of what exercises you can do. I generally, since we're in this big block of training, we're doing pretty high reps. A mixture really of, in deadlifts, we're doing 10 10s right now. And in the case of leg press, we're doing five fives. Partly because we can't really do 10 10s of leg press and deadlifts in the same session and we sort of spread them out so we're able to hit different, slightly different parts of the legs. But for you, you might be better, so you might be really powerful, so maybe you have to work on the sort of muscular endurance side, so higher reps, or maybe you're really sort of endurance in the muscles and so want to get more powerful, so do a bit less reps. So again, it's kind of, you have to look, talk to your coach, talk to the whoever it is that's helping you work out or do some research if you've not got a coach to figure out, okay, what's the best for me? What are my weaknesses? And will weights even be good for improving those weaknesses? Maybe it's more of a fitness thing and you have to just get on the air and do some miles or get out on the bike or do some cross training or something like that. That's a completely separate thing. But now after the session, we've got to fuel up because remember, food is fuel on this. Oh, I can't believe how sunny it is. I might just stand here and absorb some vitamin D. But, time to fuel up and then we'll get to some more questions. Oh yeah! And 
And we've made it outside to walk Yam, play fetch with Yam with one of these magnificent devices that just means that you can completely send the ball without blowing your shoulder out playing fetch. But on to some more questions. A lot of questions to do with Leander Club in today's sort of question answer on the story on Instagram. One of the most popular questions was, did I get kicked out of Leander Club before I moved to Bath? And the answer is no, I did not get kicked out of Leander Club. I really enjoyed being there. I enjoyed the atmosphere, I enjoyed the, the training with the squad, I enjoyed the facilities, and they're, on just, they're just on training camp just now, and that looks awesome. And so no, I didn't get kicked out. Another question is, why did I leave Leander Club? Well, I, it was time, I felt it was time for me to, I needed a change, I needed to step back a little bit and have a sort of mental reset. And so far it's helping me just, like I enjoyed training at Leander Club, but now it's, it's trying to find more enjoyment as a whole, if that makes sense. And lastly, a few people have actually asked, do, how do you join Leander Club? Or how do you join any club, really? Um, well, Leander, get in touch with the coaches at Leander Club. Uh, get in touch. There's On the Leander website, there's sort of a coaching contact form you can contact there. And it's as simple as that. They'll take into consideration sort of who you are, what you do. There's not really necessarily an erg cut off. Um, the coaches sort of take that into consideration. But now we're going to continue with the questions post puppy walk. We've got a a two hour erg today, post weights, and then letting Yam get some more energy out right now. But it looks like he's got quite a lot out. Isn't that right, Yam? Yam. Yam. So now, we're gonna continue the walk with Yam, continue throwing with this amazing device, and then continue with the questions post walk. Oh yeah. We've made it into the Yam Cave post walkies, but now we're going to try for some quick fire questions from the Q&A on the Instagram story. So here we go. How much UT2 slash lower intensity training do you currently do a week? Roughly, it's about minimum 20k a day minus a rest day. What is your resistance on your 2K? Well, I've been experimenting with that a little bit through the past sort of month or two. And I would say around 130 on the drag factor. So depending on your erg, if it's well maintained, it'll kind of sit around five-ish, but it could be higher, could be lower. So that's why you go into the drag factor settings, which is a whole video to talk about. This is a good one. Do you still play basketball? And if not, do you miss it? I haven't played basketball for a long time and don't really play it. And uh, Do I miss it? Yeah, I miss certain aspects of it. What is the name of the app you use for the gym? Well, I've posted a couple of times to this, my story on Instagram, if you haven't seen that. It's an app called Strong, and it basically is a really good tracker for your weights in the gym. And it has like an automatic rest timer, which is like a, the biggest thing I think. So you click, you've done a set and then it times you in and it gives you like a bell for your next set to begin, which I find really handy. And especially when you're doing sort of 10 sets or, or however many sets, a lot of sets, it can be sometimes hard to keep track. So it's really easy to keep track. I'm really ill right now and I have a competition in less than two weeks. Any tips? Well, a lot of people have been asking sort of, how do you come back from injury? How do you come back from illness? What do you do? What's the best things to do? Any tips? Well couple of things one of the biggest things one of the biggest tips is listen to your body if you feel ill you're probably ill and um, if you're trying to get back really quickly for a competition then you have to make sure that you are fully recovered because that competition will need a lot out of your body and if you're not recovered fully not ill then you're not going to be able to do that competition well a really big thing that I sort of have experienced and had, had some advice with so say you're off for say a couple of days through some sort of illness or injury but more tending towards the illness side and you want to get back after that second day sometimes it is better to take an extra day so take three days for example to really sort of make sure you're okay because sometimes it's better to do that rather than okay you've, you've recovered for two days and then you go back to training and then you end up back where you started and have to take more time off if that makes sense 
any chances of creating a Yam Squad podcast? Well, I do do a podcast. There's been a little bit of a delay with the current 2020 podcast on my Patreon. There's a link in the description below because I've been moving my computer around and that's what I use to record the podcast. So I have a microphone set up and all that. So hopefully the next podcast will be sort of the February, March podcast, which will be discussing all what's been going on through the start of 2020 in that podcast. So to listen to that, you can head over to the Patreon and I think it's tier two to listen to all of the podcasts and then the upcoming podcast too. Okay, last question. I think this is quite a good one as well. Do you think to get a good 2K score on the Erg, you need to put in as many meters as a water roar? Well, it kind of depends because it depends what you mean by as much as a water roar because I know some programs that do lower mileage, some do higher mileage, low intensity, high intensity, but we're going to assume that a water roar, someone that rows on the water does a high volume. And so do you have to do a lot of volume on the erg to get a good 2k score? I don't think it's necessary. It is an easier way to build your base fitness by doing a lot of volume, which will help your 2k eventually if you do the right training on top of that volume, on top of that base that you build. But it isn't the only approach to training. I want to speak to Big Phil. Big Phil took a completely different approach to training before his 500. Yes, it's a bit shorter than 2K, but he did not a lot of volume at all. I don't want to waste the surprise of how much he did, but he did a lot less volume and still pulling out world records for his 500 meters. So I want to talk to him about that, and that's really interesting. So I would say the, assum the assumption here is obviously a water roar. Someone that rows in the water does a lot of mileage, and I would say you don't have to do a lot of mileage to get a good 2K. But now it's time to hop on a mixture of these two machines. We've got the Row Perfect behind me, we've got the Erg over here, and we're going to split up the two hour exercise between the two. So we're going to hop on, to, last time it was a bit sort of tense on the Row Perfect. So we're going to go until I'm feeling like I need to switch, and then we'll switch over just as I'm getting used to the dynamic machine. So let's get on for two hours on the machines, are you? <laughs> And we've finished the two hours on the row perfect. We're supposed to split it up, but the idea was the air is there if I'm getting too uncomfortable, kind of like last week where I was getting quite uncomfortable. I didn't want to sort of injure myself, but we adjusted the row perfect a little bit, just a little bit of making it a bit more level and made a big, big difference. And it was a lot more comfortable. Just a little bit of the, the numb bum, if it were. So I'm probably for these two hour plus ergs, gonna have to go get a seat pad kind of thing or a much thicker towel but of course as always erg is bay so can't forget about the c2 beside me but the idea of the row perfect is it's just that bit more like the water at least the movement is so it's a bit more like rowing and so working on more specific rowing technique rather than sitting on the erg or at least that's the idea but for those of you that haven't been on a Row Perfect or don't know what a Row Perfect is, this machine here, I'll probably make a separate video talking about these two machines because they're both here. It'll be a good, I think it'll be a good video to make, show you the differences between the two, show the benefits either one has. But that's for future Yam Squad to look forward to. Now, after an average heart rate of 125 for two hours, burning approximately 1,472 calories. It's time to fuel up because remember food is fuel and being on the row machine, burning that many calories in one sitting means essentially it's big feed time. But we're going to feed up, fuel up, because remember food is fuel, and then get on with the last round of questions for today's Q&A or question and answer time. So I'll fuel up and then we'll get back to the house and finish off today's vlog. Oh yeah! And we've made it back into the house. As you can see, I've got my chair back here in Bath from the house. I've been gradually moving my stuff over. Hopefully get the whole computer set up here eventually. But now, finishing off the Q&A vlog, a lot of people have been asking, where do I see myself in five years? Or where do I see myself in 10 years? Where do I see myself after I finish rowing? Well, 
It's a great question, and I generally don't really have a massive or laid out plan going forward or going years in advance. I feel like currently I'm just seeing what happens a little bit, but I would love to be able to say in 10 years time that maybe I can look back at this video in 10 years and say if I've done this or not done this, but in 10 years be able to say I've been to the Olympics, that would be sort of one goal. And also sort of the goal of the YAM squad, the goal of this YouTube channel is probably to, to push it as far as possible. I would love to get a YouTube plaque and the first plaque is at 100,000 subscribers. So that is a, a massive gain from where we are now, just, just shy of 17,000 subscribers all the way up to 100,000 and I definitely think it is possible and with the support of the Yam Squad, anything is possible. But I think that's two goals really that I think in the next 10 years that I would really like to have achieved and I'm pretty much doing things now to sort of go in that direction if that makes sense. So rather than saying what are you going to do when you stop rowing, I can, I can do at least one of those things and not row but I don't think rowing will be leaving me anytime soon whether that's if I stop rowing itself I still feel like even just making these videos as part of the rowing community it's pretty massive um, and I, I feel like I could still give so much to the rowing community but not actually row maybe tour different clubs around whether it's the UK or the world and see if we can sort of work together as a worldwide yam squad phenomenon or something like that but that's for that is definitely for future yam squad to look forward to and that will be it for today's q a episode yam squad good day of training today savage leg session in the morning really feeling it in the legs but basically like i said this block we're trying to obviously bump the mileage up but it's trying to you can't basically focus on everything and so we're trying to focus on one maybe two things and then trying to do those really well and then changing that focus after this big block so you can't work on massive amounts of fitness and you can't do strength and you can't do sort of your high-end stuff and your low-end stuff and all that kind of work you have to be able to try and balance it out and work on not necessarily one thing for one training block but almost very close to that so that you get the benefit of that thing and you're not interfering with sort of other parts of training and then you're not letting other parts of training interfere with that one thing or one maybe two things hopefully that made sense but as always yam squad remember to subscribe if you haven't already hit that like button and i will see you tomorrow for the next episode of the vlog so are you